Well, hello, Crime Stuppers. Holy cow. It's happening. Um, I don't even know where to go today. Uh, I just feel the need to make a video. We can talk about history. You want to talk about history? You want to talk about the Roman Empire? You want to talk about the fact that uh, they rewrote history and made you believe that uh, there were they were the first ones here? They, they were the first, well, Hawaii. Um, you know, there are already Hawaiians here. There are already Indians here. There are already Negroes, if you want to use that, right? Africans uh, in the Americas. Uh, Moroccan Empire, as a matter of fact. Um, do you know that the Moroccan Empire was the first empire to recognize the United States? The, 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 uh, the new country? There were many Africans in the Americas from South America and Brazil throughout the uh, Caribbean, Caribbean, uh, Mexico, what we now call Mexico, and all over the United States long before Columbus got here. And then the story that they tell you is that, oh, no, we brought you here as slaves. Uh, no, many of them came here as free men and were enslaved. Uh, many of them came as adventurers, right? The new, the promise, the way we always do things. Uh, they lied about how the Hawaiians got as far as the Americas. Really, they got as far as Hawaii and Easter Island, but they didn't get to South America and North America. Even though in uh, British Columbia, there's an island called Gwaii. Hawaii, I'm pretty sure those uh, Hawaiians had... Uh, <laughs> were... were uh, in that cold water up there in the northern Pacific, and uh, they had uh, noses that were uh, a little clogged up in that uh, cold weather. Gawaii. It's not Hawaii. Gawaii. Because uh, that's all the difference it is. Uh, go look it up. There is an island there. Um, and uh, if you look at the genetics, yeah, they're related to Hawaiians. Uh, the stories that they've told you are complete bullshit, my friends. The history of this planet is complete bullshit uh, from top to bottom. The white guys, if you want to call it that, and that's what I mean. I'm going to use some words a little later on that are going to upset uh, some because uh, you don't even know what the words mean, but they're, but you're offended by them. No clue what the words mean, but I'm offended. Uh, that keeps you from knowing what the words mean, and that keeps you enslaved. Um, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and a bunch of others, Dianne Feinstein, uh, it's, a, it's a long list. <laughs> it's a very long list. Treasonous, wretched humans are about to be uh, busted for being treasonous, wretched humans. Go look in our law. Our law says, uh, and it's not our law when you get down to it. See that this? Every word now. <laughs> now that I'm uh, become slightly more aware. Uh, the United States of America, that's a corporation, but that corporation has some bylaws that these people are in uh, that they're part of because they're elected officials inside this uh, corporation and the corporation says no you can't commit treason against the corporation there's a special term for you uh, if you're not loyal to the corporation and uh, these people have not been loyal to the corporation and the penalty for this uh, disloyalty will be death uh, many of the people in our military uh, too many people know about the pedophilia right you guys can sit all day long and make that conspiracy theory it's not conspiracy theory. These people, go look, okay. You gotta know what the words mean. Go look all over Europe. Do you see temples of Saturn all over Europe? Do you see temples of Saturn in Palestine? Do you see temples of Saturn? And many of them were kicked over. Because what happened in those temples? Uh, the Saturnists believe in blood sacrifice. Blood sacrifice is part and parcel. Children uh, are the best blood sacrifice. Virgins, they want pristine. Um, this is not a joke. They kill people and sacrifice them to these gods in return for power or perceived power. Um, understand that these subhuman, they're not the same as us. They, they have no, they lack creativity. They lack, they can't even make music. Um, barely. These people are not like us. And I use the word people because, uh, there could be people from elsewhere. Do you agree? The fact that there are a hundred billion suns in our galaxy alone, 40 billion of them have wet worlds, and there are no other people anywhere except on this planet. And you look around, and do you notice that the people on this planet don't all look the same? Uh, yesterday, I went to the, the uh, parade for the Maui County Fair. 
Love it. I just, I enjoy it. I, we, be, between me and my sons, we knew half the people in the parade. <laughs> so we were saying hi. And people were looking at us like, what the heck? But, you know, the, the, uh, if you're in community, you should know your community. You should know people in your community, especially if you've been here for decades uh, or been in your community for decades. Don't be a hermit. Don't be uh, a lone person uh, and feel sorry for these people because, like I said, the, they're not sorry, but have understanding, have compassion for these people because uh, a few years ago, I was just as sound asleep as any cop, as any police officer. And oh, and just by coincidence, just by chance, uh, last night, I was stopped by a police officer. He was looking for DUIs. I knew the guy. Uh, well, I knew of the guy. We'd had conversations previous to this. He was telling me about Oxycontin. Uh, we had a conversation about Oxycontin because uh, I was ignorant about Oxycontin and the fact that in our community, uh, and see, he's frustrated because he knows these guys are selling Oxy to kids, but if they got a prescription, wh what can he do, right? He's one of the guys that, uh, yes, he's, uh, I would say, and see, and you use this term, uh, ignorant, um, but he is trying to with, uh, uphold law and order in our community, trying to get the Oxycontin people out the street, trying to make sure that guys like me aren't flying around on the roads at night uh, drunk, uh, which could cause harm to uh, others. Um, like, you know, and, I'm, and am I going to get into some conversation about, was I involved in commercial activity when you stopped me? Right, Bob? No, I just showed him my license. Why do I keep a license? So I don't have to have that conversation with an armed man on the side of the road in the middle of the night. Right? And his excuse was, I didn't stop completely at a stop sign. Well, uh, I disagree because I came to a stop. It was on a hill on top of everything else. So I came to a stop. Uh, it was dark. So I could see there were no headlights anyway, anywhere. And I continued on through. And when I went through the stop sign, he stopped me. And I was pretty sure that was a cop behind me. But anyway, he wasn't trying to stop me for uh, going through a stop sign. He was trying to see if I was drunk or not because he, he could see. I was with my two little boys. We're taking them home after a, a, a fun evening out. Um, and he was uh, trying to make sure that I wasn't drinking. That's it, right? And I know some of you guys are like, I'll drink if I want to and drive. But you shouldn't be driving a vehicle impaired. And again, were you driving or was I driving? I was not driving. I was traveling. And uh, does he really have a fucking thing to say about it when you get right down to it? No. But do you see his heart's in the right place is the point. He has a wife. He has children. He loves his wife. He loves his children. He loves uh, the community enough that he tries to serve the community. Now, the fact that he doesn't understand uh, the fact that uh, the Maui County and the County of Maui are two different things, and uh, the fact that the United States of America is a usurping uh, corporation, and that uh, they have tricked me and him and everyone else into thinking that the corporation and myself, a corpse that can orate, a corporation, uh, and that we, uh, you know, he has uh, conjoined or joined her, he has uh, assumed that this person right here. Uh, the living flesh, and I know people that don't want to use person because person can be a corporation, certainly it can, um, but that's a term in the common vernacular, but it's also there's private person and there's public person, uh, and those some of those public persons can be corporations. Uh, like I said, learn the words, learn the thing, don't, don't, don't get hung up on the words, um, but understand, slave, that we are slaves until such time as we tell them that we're not, and uh, it's here. Mind control, government, government. They are governing your mind. Once they have your mind, they have everything else. They have your money. They, ha they have everything else once they govern you. So if you cannot govern your own mind, uh, and um, they have throughout history, and when I say they, we'll have to talk about who they is in a minute. But I mean, these people, it turns out they have very little creativity and they have very little ability. They, Basically, they're parasites. They suck off of us. We're, we are batteries for them. They take our commercial energy. But anyway, the point being is that if you um, can't govern yourself, and history has shown that we're pretty bad at governing ourselves, we wind up killing, and destroying, and burning things, and uh, it's you know right. We don't we don't we don't get along so well together in large groups. Uh, we're getting better at that. 
But uh, overall, in the past, uh, if you read your history, there has been plenty of times when uh, one group of people tries to take advantage of another group of people because they have better technology, they got better swords, they got bronze, these guys got, right? I mean, just going through the ages, um, trying to keep the strong from uh, overwhelming and uh, harming the weak, uh, has been, or, or the belligerent from taking advantage of the peaceful, uh, this has been... Uh, a constant struggle in our history over the ages. Uh, so there are those that uh, have decided that the best way to do it is to govern us, government. They are the ones that are going to make decisions for us, and uh, we are the ones that are going to abide by those decisions. Um, when you become sovereign, and that word, uh, you got to be careful with that word. It doesn't mean what you think it means. It doesn't mean you can walk into a court of law and act like a jackass. And it doesn't mean that you're, when the guy stops you on the side of the road, you can be, you know, belligerent to him in the middle of the night. Uh, why, why would you? Why not just, right? I handed him my license. He gave me a warning because he, I wasn't what he was looking for. What he was looking for was a drunk driver. Uh, and he sent me on my merry way. Or I could have got all upset. Why are you flashing your blue lights at me? Why, blah, blah, blah. Right? Or not. Here's a parable. Here's a. It's not a parable. It's a koan, or it's a, or not even a koan. It's a story um, where there is a samurai, and uh, he had a very. Uh, he was a uh, haughty and arrogant, not the good kind of samurai. And his horse was very belligerent, also, and kicked if you got close, and you know, bit, and you know, that kind of war horse. And he was parked in a very narrow street in a prefecture. So, uh, and, and it was to the point where women and children were having a hard time getting past the horse because if they tried to walk behind it, it might kick them or something. Along comes this, a superior man. Not the superior man, just a superior man. You, you have to know uh, about superior men in the, uh, in the stories of the East. Um, in Russia, there's the fool, but there's also the superior man. In uh, China and Japan, the superior man is often... Uh, and all over Southeast Asia and Indonesia, um, is often part of the, the, the stories. So what would the superior man do? What would a superior man do? What is a superior man? A superior man governs, governs his own mind, meditates, uh, is uh, well-equipped and well-able to use uh, arms. Uh, anyway, a superior man comes along, and uh, the, they come up to him and like, this samurai, he parked his horse over there, and he was like, what are you going to do about it? So he walks down the street and he sees the horse in the middle of the street and uh, goes around, takes another, takes another street and goes around, right? The idea is don't pick a fight when you don't need to pick a fight. The idea is be peaceful if you can be peaceful. Pray for peace. Pray for the, uh, uh, that doesn't, and praying for peace does not mean these guys get let off. These people are raping children. They were raping, well, I think they're still raping children. This last, uh, see, because what they're expecting the last holiday that they just had. They have many holidays, but the last one was uh, the equinox, and coming up is the solstice and Saturnella, and that, that's coming up in December. Pray for peace, because they will be uh, sacrificing because they are uh, looking for the Hail Mary pass, right? They're looking for that for them to save them at the very end. They're looking for their, their guy, their god, their... I don't have words, they, the uh, thing that they pray to, to, uh, to pull them out of this at the very end. Uh, again, they, I don't care if you believe. They don't care if you believe. They believe. They absolutely believe. They are fiercely religious, and they, I, I say it over and over again, um, and they're also sociopathic and psychopathic at this point, because they're so... Uh, you got to give them credit. There's only about, from all sources, I look around, I've done as much research, I've tried to watch videos, I've talked to people, I've talked to people that have talked to people, I've talked to people that are in the club, as it were, uh, people that number their wealth in billions, uh, you know, sit at their table, uh, tutor their kids, um, and they all say the same. It's about eight to 10,000 of these guys. Eight to 10,000 of them have enslaved the except, billions of us, billions of us with this Simple plan, using words and lies. So if you want to free yourself from this small group of people that just basically takes a little bit from each, they figured out that taking 100% of your labor, well, pretty soon you get pissed off and, and you might revolt, and then they wind up getting killed and things burn down and there's blood and fire and all kind of stuff like that. So the better way to go about doing things is to make sure that you think you're free. 
It's fucking brilliant. I mean, it, come on. It's brilliant. So you think you're free. You're a free-range chicken. They take all your eggs. Uh, once in a while, they take, you know, oh, they got Kenny. Right? I mean, and, but they didn't get you, so you're fine. Um, the thing that's really annoying, though, is, all right, let's go back to the time of uh, Rome, uh, when the thing started falling apart, and uh, many of the uh, slaves uh, were in uprising. And again, are, are they going to write and tell you about this? Are they going to give you the education you need to overthrow them? Are, you, are they going to give you the education? Are they going to tell you, uh, they're going to teach you Spanish and Latin and French and so on? No. They're going to give you this baby talk babble that I'm talking to you in right now that you can understand. Um, see, and you guys can all read. I'm, I'm sure most of you have graduated high school and college. So you think you can read. You think you can write. But you don't know what the words mean. And that becomes very apparent when you text each other and break up because uh, one person thought it meant this and the other person thought it meant that. And then there's hard feelings. I have guy. I don't text, by the way. Right? It blows the, the uh, younger generation's mind. But I don't have a device with which I text. Um, but the idea is uh, when you don't, when you have differing opinions on what the words mean, that can be problematic. Well, they're not going to give you the words and they're not going to give you the definitions of the words. And they're certainly not going to teach you about law. And they're certainly not going to teach you about how to be quote unquote sovereign, uh, how to be a free man, how to be, uh, you know, on the same footing as they are. They want you uh, to be chattel and chattel to corporations and the corporations all like, so if you are, uh, part of a corporation from one place and you move to a corporation uh, that's in control of another place, well, then that corporation gives you, right, they, they give you over and basically you become property of the new corporation and they get to tax you and they get to charge you license for licenses and fees and permits and so forth, right? Uh, and, you know, the, the more, the and, and okay, somebody said this perfectly, it's their karma, right? Have pity for them, have compassion for them because they aren't creating anything. They're just sucking off of you and me in the form of license or tax or per like last night. If he, if the guy had wanted to, uh, and see, I was, look, I had my little, I got my little stamp that has UCC, right? 301, right? I mean, I got the whole, I'm, I don't, I should bring it, but see, that lets them know that I didn't just come across this yesterday. I had a stamp made and I can show the receipt that it was made years ago, right? I've been on this journey for quite a while. Um, and sujuris, impropria, in, impropria persona, can't even pronounce the words because I'm a slave, <laughs> or have been a slave my whole life, uh, just like you, um, but impropria persona, uh, but see, I have studied some Spanish and some uh, French and some Latin, uh, not a lot, but enough that I, I recognize it when I see it, like, say est tu que vi, That's, that would be Spanish, or, uh, and okay, so that, that was going there when I interrupted myself again. The Roman Empire, they break it into Spanish, French, Italian, right? The underlying uh, language is still Latin for the Roman church, but now they got three different languages, and they always do it in threes, um, and they can pit each other against each other. Another, they can always make alliances, two against one, one against two, right? One against the other, wait for the two to get, right? So they're always fighting with each other, and they never, uh, never, the dogs are always fighting among each other and rarely ever unite against the wolf, right? Uh, so the idea is they figured out how to do this in their own empire after it fell apart because, like I said, the, uh, the slaves got a little uppity and a little upset when they finally uh, decided that they had enough of these guys sacrificing their children and taking their tribute and taking money and not getting much in return. Um... And again, the very first ones that were doing this, they were mostly lazy. And then came these this death cult that uh, took over, and now they're not just lazy, but evil. And again, seven deadly sins. Look over the seven deadly sins. What are the seven deadly sins? Um, wow, I shouldn't have those in the picture. Oh, well, they've been in the picture the whole time. But uh, the idea is that the uh, seven deadly sins, one of them is sloth. Uh, one of them is bearing false witness, right? I mean, lying. Uh, truth takes care of itself. So once you discover the truth, now here's the thing. Uh, a little truth can be dangerous. you got to know the whole truth, and you have to be able to uh, speak it and know it. Negligence, uh, ignorance is negligence. If you want to be a free man, then you need to be able to speak Latin. Uh, or at least, oh, see, I, and I have an advantage because I'm old enough that when I was a child, I heard Latin in the churches, 
right? They speak the, the masses in English now, but back in the day, I was forced, by the way, to go to these, right, because of Catholic school. Um, they, you know, you didn't have an option, and my mom wasn't going to be, gonna, they, gonna, was, I mean, she, she fought over a few things, like what books I could read. They were trying to tell me what books I could read way back in sixth grade when I was 12 years old, and my mother wasn't having any of that, and you, that was an interesting thing, because the nuns and priests uh, withered be, before her wrath when the, they were trying to take books away from me from reading. Anyway, um, the point being, though, is that yeah, I was forced, and I'm happy, actually, that they were, because I've heard it spoken. I've heard Latin spoken in these masses. Uh, and then I, uh, and it was interesting to me. And then when I was a little older, uh, well, actually one year older, I got to, I was uh, instructed in Latin. And I learned, uh, you know, just a very little bit of Latin. How much can you learn as a 12, 13-year-old boy uh, in a year? Um, but I had good teachers, and it's always been something that's interesting to me. And it uh, helps with the English, and it helped me with my Spanish, and it helped me with my French. And now, take a look. Uh, the Universal Postal Service, the, you know, the, the, that Universal Post Office that uh, takes care of all commerce on this planet, basically. Uh, what's the official language? French. Why? Because most people don't speak it. <laughs> right, and then uh, now they just changed it. Uh, I forget the date. Shoot, I need to go look it up. But they just changed it recently, like in the last you know twenty, thirty years, which is uh, pretty recent on the scale, grand scale of things. When you're talking about these people that have been doing this for centuries, uh, they changed it so that English is a convenience language, right? The baby talk, babble, uh, dog Latin uh, that we speak um, in English is uh, it's basically pigeon. It's a, it's like pigeon English. They take some words, right? We take words from, but this is a pigeon that comes from all over the place. We take words from every other language, uh, and now the pigeon is becoming has become the dominant language of the slaves. Um, but as long as we have a difficult time talking to each other, and as long as we have a difficult time expressing ourselves, putting our mind on paper, so we have a testament which can become a document which can be spoken in court. Uh, and see again, are you in court or are you just in a courtroom? where they are fooling around with statutes, right? And they'll they'll do whatever they can to trick you into giving them money, right? That's how they fund themselves, right? I just sent a package using, and I'm gonna start using the other mail, right? The United States Post Office, not the United States Postal Service, just for shits and giggles, just to prove the point. Um, but I sent a package and they had a fee, like a hazardous materials fee that they charge. And, it, and uh, in American, it was only $5 because this was down in the South Pacific and our money goes a long way down there. And uh, anyway, but would they charge a sovereign for a hazardous materials fee? All they did was take a little extra money, right? That's how they pay their salaries. That's how they run their uh, the administration. That's how they run their bureaucracy by taking a little bit from each one of you. Buck here, five bucks there, 30 bucks there. Ooh, traffic ticket for driving without a license. There's 200 bucks and then the court fee of, or the, what do you call the processing fee of $80. $280, right there, um, and, you know, and then your uh, speed limit, they're driving over the speed limit, right, and that funds the police department, that funds all kinds of stuff, right, it also funds a lot of graft, it certainly doesn't put, uh, doesn't fix potholes, anyhow, um, and most people, like I said, the people that are involved in this, I was just talking to a nerd that is highly involved in making some of the software that uh, is in your phone, that turns that phone into a collar, that makes it so that you uh, they know where you are, plus or minus five feet, right? They know, they can turn on your microphone, they can turn on your camera, they have all your metadata. So not only do they know where you are, plus or minus five feet, they know if you're a Republican or a Democrat or independent or pretty much what your political views are. How do you know? Or how do they know this? Because uh, they can tell from the stuff that you post on the internet. And they can tell from who your friends are. And they can tell from what you like when you hit like on it, right? You can, they can tell. Are you pro-abortion? Are you anti-abortion? Are you what, right? Are you uh, left-leaning, right-leaning? Are you a Christian? Are you a Muslim? Are you Buddhist? Are you whatever? They can tell from your social media. Now, if you don't see how that can be used nefariously, <laughs> I have a problem with you because you're silly. Um, because absolutely, if they have that data, um, and now they know where you are. Right, so when it comes time to round you up and put you on boxcars or in the spaceship, hey, just give us your thumbprint and we'll let you go take a trip around the solar system. We'll see. Um, 
like I said, I have never met an alien, never seen an alien, but the the mathematics tells me that they must exist. That I mean, there's just there's too many forty billion shots at it. I'm gonna say there's more than a few of us uh, running around. And then even Catherine Austin Fitz uh, and uh, what's her name? Hudis? I don't. I can't remember that woman's name. Uh, I can see her face. But uh, basically, she was one of the first ones that I saw that was like, wait a minute, she's talking about the long skulls out loud in public. And, and of course, she was absolutely savage, like, you crazy conspiracy theorist. But the idea is, uh, what about just a breakaway civilization? What about, uh, look how fast we got from horse and buggy to this, where you are, right? And this is now, uh, this is what's wakening everyone up. This is what the awakening is about. Um, and starting to understand the language and starting to understand that you got to know what the words mean and starting to understand that, yeah, it's fine to be a sovereign, but you can't be an ignorant sovereign. You can't be, and, and what does that word mean? That it's just, I mean, there's going to be all kind of connotation put on that. Uh, police have a definite connotation that, oh, this guy thinks he's a sovereign. Um, well, you are, but you have to fill out the right paperwork. That's politics right there. You can't just be, I know lots of people will say, well, I'm free. My mind's free. Yeah, let's see how free you are when uh, the cop stops you with a gun and he tells you you were speeding or that you didn't stop at the stoplight or that you, uh, you know, you ran the stoplight because it turned red before you went through the intersection or, 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 or all the bajillions of things they can get you for not wearing your seatbelt uh, in, here in this state. If you've got a cell phone, they can stop you because you're not allowed to talk on your cell phone while you're driving, um, which is a good thing for commercial drivers, I'd have to say. But for those of you that are actually just traveling, anyway or just deporting yourself on the public thoroughfares. But the idea is they can stop you, and uh, as much as your mind is free, if you don't prove to them that uh, these laws do not apply to you, and see, they are under the impression that these laws apply to everybody equally all the time, because they're slaves just like you, and all they're doing is enforcing the law and trying to keep law and order in your county. These are not evil men. These are men that are trying to do their best. Most of them have no idea. The judges, on the other hand, that have s sworn to the bar and so on, and some of the lawyers, but a lot of lawyers are ignorant too, right? A lot of lawyers know what, what's up, but a lot of lawyers also don't have any idea. A lot of the sheriffs have no idea, especially in the counties. Like here in Hawaii, it's a whole different other animal because this is the conquered kingdom of Hawaii and this is a whole, this is completely different. This is as far outside the United States as you can be and still be inside the United States. Um, sort of. You take a, go take a look. I think the treaty expired. And uh, they didn't inform us, right? If the tree falls in the forest and uh, nobody tells you, did the tree really fall? Uh, which is why you'll see Maisie Hirono and a couple of the other ones just losing their freaking minds with uh, Donald Trump. You want to get back to the uh, current events of uh, 2018. It's now October. Elections coming up. It's happening, guys. Um, this whole Kavanaugh thing. See, I'm not a big fan of Kavanaugh at all. Uh, I mean, at all. I'm not a big fan of that guy because when it comes to Vince Foster, and I had I dated a woman that used to work in the Rose Law Firm, uh, and it was a, one of those unspoken secrets, one of those, uh, you know, everybody knew but nobody said anything, that Vince Foster and Hillary Clinton had a thing going on. And uh, when he died, everybody was, yeah, that was, I mean, they knew that, I mean, yeah. Anyway, um, but who covered for that and who covered for the Clintons and the Bushes for years and decades. And they're trying to make it sound like he was doing it out of, you know, that he was being coerced and that it was under duress and so forth. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But the fact is he still made sure that a woman and a man that committed murder got away with it. Uh, he, and uh, it's clear, it seems pretty clear to me that he was part of that. And now he, they want to put him up as a Supreme Court justice and all because, you know, all the Trumpers are saying because, you know, Trump uh, appointed him that he must be, right? I'm telling you, it's pro wrestling. And these guys, Trump is the enemy of my enemy. He doesn't, that doesn't make him my friend. Now, I'll be very interested to see if uh, Kavanaugh, uh, and I'm 99% sure that he's going to get uh, confirmed. But if he doesn't get confirmed, then it could be interesting. I mean, there's so much going on with this because think about it. He could be... Here's here's one scenario that I've heard, and I, and I'm you pick the one you like, uh, or the one you believe, uh, and maybe you have another one that you uh, have that's different than the ones I'm about to talk about. But um, could be Trump doesn't like Kavanaugh, 
and uh, he knew what was going to happen when he appointed him, and you see what's happened, right? They, they've doxed him, they're attacking his house, they're running over his lawn, they're, they've, they've accused him. I don't believe these women for a second, personally. Not for a second, right? It's, it's just too much of a smear campaign, it's just too bullshit, really so... Um, this other woman that I, I can't even remember all the names. I should, uh, you need a freaking cheat sheet just to keep up with the current events. But, uh, she was 19 or whatever. He, she, anyway, she was older, much older going to these high school parties, apparently knew that there were women being raped in the other room, according to her own fucking testimony. And, uh, just was partying along, right? They, she, they knew they spiked it and they knew that they were gang raping other, uh, some other girls at the party. And she was just partying along while they're being gang raped in another room. And she knew about this. Really? All right. Um, what kind of person is that? There's a special place in hell for her, if that's if she's actually telling the truth. Um, and then Ford comes up, talking like a 10-year-old, and uh, just the hole after hole in her story. I think what they did is they set perjury traps. So that's the other end of it. So one of them is like, oh, they didn't like him, and if he doesn't get elected, well, good for him, because he covered for Kavanaugh. Or excuse me, he covered for uh, Clinton's when it came to uh, Vince Foster. And uh, he covered for, I mean, on and on. Just take a look at, the, at, at some of the things that he's been a part of over the years. Um, yeah, stellar record, sure. Okay, um, so you have that part of it. And then you have the other part of it is where, uh, yeah, he wants revenge. Or, yeah, he's been flipped to the other side. And, and uh, uh, if you look at his record, he is fairly uh, constitutional, constitutionally oriented. Um, but at the same time, he had no problem with the surveillance. He had no problem with the, the, he considers all that metadata collection is in line with the fourth amendment. He said that out loud, it's come out of his mouth. So me, not the biggest fan of Kavanaugh and that whole thing is, uh, but the idea is that if he is a company man, and when I say company man, uh, part of the uh, company of Trump and the Marines and the others that are going after these treasonous traitor fucks. Uh, that worship Saturn and have uh, set up a system and they know about the system that is designed to suck all the commercial energy out of as many people as possible. See, like I said, they can't take 100% anymore because the slaves revolt. So they just take a little bit here and there. Oh, and see, and you'll even feel like, oh, I, I was I was speeding, so I should pay the fine. Oh, I what, right? I mean, oh, yeah, if I pay my tax, they got these people asking to pay taxes. Well, if I pay my taxes then, you know, the homeless will be fed. The, nothing, I mean, are you kidding? You're, you Take a look at where your tax money goes and how that works. And guess who gets it, right? And where does it go? Again, all roads lead to Rome. <sighs> so uh, this corporation that's putting on the show for you, and they've gotten to the point where the corporation actually, they put showmen in now, right? Ronald Reagan was an actor. Uh, Trump is also a bit of an actor. He was a reality TV show actor, not an actual, you know, uh, acting with chim chimpanzees actor, but he was, he uh, definitely, uh, but he's the right man for the job when it comes to bankruptcy and all this other stuff, but I mean, he's still an actor and he's putting on a show because that's part of the deal. The American Corporation puts on a great, it's the best show ever. Are you kidding me? I mean, and, and, and it has, and see, this is the thing. Whether you, you guys can be Moors if you want to, uh, put your fez on, and, uh, oh, I should play that, right? Go back and listen to Steely Dan, right? The World Scam, the Fez, a few others, uh, even their album covers. What, you know, the, the, the crowd is sleeping while these demons are rising. Um, anyway, the point being is that uh, many people have figured out the scam, and the uh, United States government and uh, is operating in the geographical location that we call the United States. But for my part, I was not born in the federal zone. But wait a minute. If you get nine, you know, what is it? 96793 is, is Wailuku, but uh, that's the zip code here. If you get a uh, envelope addressed and plus the zip plus four on top of everything else, uh, doesn't that, the, I would presume that you're in the federal zone using that abbreviation, HI, which is copyrighted, by the way. Um, you look like you're in the federal zone to me. So if you're in the federal zone and you vote on top of everything, oh, let's talk about that for just a second. Um, do you notice that one of the motifs of the uh, Masons and the secret societies is the black and white checkers, right? The black and white, right? The checkerboard. 
uh, you'll see it in, in, in England, a lot, most of the cops have that around, the police officers will have that checker, black and white, going around. But I mean, you see a lot more of that, I mean, that's one of their motifs, black and white. Well, um, I'm supposed to be black. If uh, you have fairer skin than me, you probably think you're white. Where's the nation of white? If you've ever filled out white or black or Asian or Hispanic, or if you've ever ticked one of those boxes, you a nigga. You are, right? We all niggas now. Go back and read the 13th and 14th Amendments. Um, they have made it so that you think one thing and it's actually another, right? Your, your race is not white. There's no white race. There's no black race. Where's the country of black? Race has to do, go back and learn what the words mean. Uh, there's no, an African, right? Uh, you need to know uh, what and who you are. That's why most Americans can't even, you know, go back three generations. You don't even know who your grandfather's grandfather was. Most of you, many of you can, can do a little bit of uh, research on that and figure it out. But I mean, for the most part, it's not even passed down. They've tra taught you not to pass it down. So your grandfather's grandfather, no idea. Uh, that where your surname, like, I know where my surname comes from because uh, on the one side, because uh, those were the holders of slaves, right? Uh, the, the last name Smith, uh, Boone is one of my favorite ones. The Boone Plantation is still there. There are lots and lots of Boones running around. Uh, Rogers all over the South and in Canada, right? Uh, and those were Englishmen that owned slaves and uh, took over, uh, you know, colonists that came to the United States. Uh, Smith, Rogers, uh, Boone, or, or some other ones, you know, pop, pop, popular ones. But look at all the English surnames and then figure out what a surname is. And then again, go back and read Isaiah 26. Um, or actually, no, wait, sorry, Genesis uh, 1, 26. Uh, where it talks about what is the thing that creepeth, right? And go back and look at the law dictionaries. You need Bouviers. And go look at the Supreme Court. What law dictionary do they use? That's the law dictionary that you should use. See, Webster came along and gave us all these other definitions, right? He was, he was uh, charged with giving us uh, word definitions. Um, and our language changed, right? Uh, being square, that used to be a good thing, right? And they changed that into a negative connotation, right? But as a guy that was square, right? Are we square? Uh, is it square, right? Um, and then, like I said, nigger. They take that word and they made it to the point where you're so offended by that word, you don't know what it means. But if you, uh, it, it's an ignorant, it's an ignoramus. It's a person that's ignorant. It, and you have uh, equated that with color, right? Um, black is definitely, but that doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be a, a, what we call a black man. Because am I black? Where? I don't have anything black. Do I have something here black? Uh, yeah, here. That's black. And even then, we can argue about what black this is. What kind of, there's lots of different kinds of black. But is this black uh, uh, compared to me? No, but if they get you to tick the box, now you have classified yourself as black. And uh, that is a classification under the law. And uh, you better know what it means. And you can change it to white, <laughs> but you better know what that means. Um, the point being is that you don't know what the words mean and they use the words to trap you at law. And if you have gone to go vote in the corporation that is the United States, uh, that would probably make you an office holder because you have to hold the office of U.S. citizen to be able to vote in a United States election. Uh, if you are a state citizen, you got nothing to do with that corporation. That corporation puts on a hell, like I said, it puts on a hell of a show though, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. Can't wait. Maybe they're going to get Clinton. Maybe they're going to get, right? And we got spies and we got, the, and we got pedophilia and we got uh, guys, you know, ch trafficking children. And we, I mean, oh my God. We got, and see, they do these things and going back to Roman times when they figured out that, okay, we get the Italians, we get the, uh, we call these guys Italians, right? These are the Romans. Uh, we get the guys over here. Um, speaking Spanish, we get these guys over here speaking uh, French. Okay, now they can't really speak with each other that well because they speak different languages. And now we draw some lines on a map and we say, you're French, you have a different language, you have a different culture. You're Spanish, you have a different language, you have a different culture, and, you, and you've mixed with the Moors, even worse. Um, you're Italian, the Italians also definitely, like Sicily and so forth, you're kidding, the Mediterranean. Anyway, uh, mixed with those from Northern Africa. But anyway, you have that culture, and now we can get you guys to war with each other. And now we can make money by selling each guy arms. Okay, and then you just spread that out around the world. Uh, now we've got the United States. And yay, United States. So now they're going to go over and fight with these other guys that have a different religion than you, right? Their mind is different when it comes to God, right? So 
Um, now uh, we get these guys to think that theirs is better, and we get these other guys, and now we can get those guys to war. They've killed hundreds of millions of us. Wait a minute. Did they do the killing? Right? Is, is it these 10,000? Is it these long skulls? Do you see the long skulls guarding the prisons? Do you see, do you see these uh, elite, this 1%? Do you see the satanic pedophiles guarding the prisons? Well, maybe a few of them, but overall, no, no, you don't. They're not going to get their hands dirty guarding the prisons. Do you see them on the front lines uh, leading the charges in the battle? Nope. Right? None of that. What you see is the idea, or what you see is that they get us to believe in the Christ, and that's better than the Buddha, or that's better than the than Allah, and you don't even know what that word means in Islam or any of that. Uh, oh, those are Jews, so you got to fight with the Jews because you have a different right. And we kill each other. They don't care, right? I'm gonna make okay. Okay, I'm not gonna tell that story, but okay. So there is a um, let's just take a cop on the side of the road. Or, or at, at any function, right? They're there to keep law and order. They're usually armed. They usually direct traffic and so forth, right? We, we have big events and so forth here, like the county fair, where the people, you got to be able to direct them and so forth, because if you don't, they'll make a mess and no, nothing can happen. Um, but that's a guy, just a, a guy like you and me. Uh, now, uh, you have these video games where they, they get these kids to uh, put it in their mind that it's okay to shoot those guys. In the video game, they pretend all the time. You shoot at cop cars, you shoot at the cops, and so forth. And in various games, Grand Theft Auto, and all, and that's not the only game. There's plenty of games that I've been just aghast where uh, the kids get to pretend, right? They're pretending. They're in their mind. Stand fast at the doors of your mind and guard against whatsoever you let therein uh, to f shoot police officers. Okay. Uh, and I get it. I know lots of guys. Fuck the police, right? And they got they got all this. Stuff. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay, but at the same time, those are your countrymen. And those a lot of those countrymen are not just your countrymen. Those are countrymen that fucking stepped up and uh, are trying to keep law and order and trying to keep murder rates down. But no, what they wind up doing is being corrupted. So now, instead of catching rapists and stopping murders and th that kind of crime, um, you're growing flowers in your backyard. And uh, the, the drug that's so awesome that uh, people usually just use it for its side effects. But no, this is the healer. This is... Uh, I was just having a, another conversation with yet another guy that's using press because he doesn't want to use solvents to extract the uh, medicine. Um, but the concept that about 80% of the time, it works on curing cancer. It helps kids come out of autism. It helps kids that are vax damaged. It helps kids that, same thing. It helps uh, people that have Alzheimer's. It helps people that, right, because they poison us slowly but surely. The three things you need to know, right? Law, it, medicine and language, right? You can't do any of the others, right? The sciences, the mathematics is part of the language that you need to know, but uh, science and medicine, right? Uh, people cannot believe that I have five decades and more. I do not use, I come from a generation that was programmed that, you know, only faggots use uh, hair dye and uh, color, right? Metrosexual men and so forth. Those are the guys that use, uh, you know, I see all the products on the shelves that, you know, you can dye your beard or dye your hair. Uh, one, I'm not spending money on that. I'm just not spending money on that. And two, I come from the generation that was programmed. John Wayne, right? Uh, uh, oh, shoot, he just died, and now I can't think of his name at the moment. Uh, come on, Burt Reynolds, there you go. And all these other guys, uh, you know, Dirty Harry and all this. All right, these are men. Men don't use hair dye. But anyway, they, they, uh, they look at me and like, where's the gray? Well, I understand food science. Right? I understand medicine. I understand, I understand some basic physiology. The, sugar is the most sure poison. It is the sweetest poison. It is the slowest poison, but it is the surest poison. Right? These guys know. And that what they've done, uh, you, when you get to biology and so forth, over the years they have used bio-warfare against the people constantly. Right? They wiped out the Indians using bio-warfare, giving them blankets. They wiped out the Hawaiians. They wiped out the many Polynesians. They wiped out... Right, and now they have uh, gotten to the point where they make viruses like AIDS and so forth. There is crazy talk. Oh no, right? But no, and then they put it in the vaccines, and then they spread it out. Uh, and these guys are so evil that they're not going to contaminate the whole batch of vaccines, just some of them. Because they contaminate the whole batch, then you can go back and go, oh, it was that vaccine that caused this damage. But if only some of the vaccine, like say ten percent, twenty percent of this vaccine, 
is contaminated with virus or contaminated with parasite or contaminated with uh, various uh, of those ingredients, mercury, lead, uh, cadmium, God knows what else they put in there. Uh, squalene. I mean, look, just look at the insert and see what those ingredients are. Really, you want to inject that into your child um, uh, or an adult or anybody. But anyway, the idea is you don't infect every, you don't make the whole batch bad because if you make the whole batch bad, we can, right? Um, and again, more conversations, inoculation. Uh, the viruses and the things on this planet, we live in synergy. We live in harmony uh, with these things. That's why there's 7 billion of us on this planet. And a lot of those, like chicken pox and measles and mumps and rubella, uh, thins out the herd that doesn't have a good immune system and uh, makes it so that the rest of us are stronger. And uh, we get along with those. And it also inoculates us against the really bad ones. So that the, the, the uh, ones that aren't so bad, like measles, everybody in the generation behind me, everybody, not just some of them, every fucking buddy got measles, right? And uh, yes, when you have that many, some of them, uh, most for most people, that's like getting acne or getting a rash that lasts for two or three days, and it's done. No big deal, right? And then you measles protects you from a lot of other things. Once you have measles and your immune system kicks up to that, same thing with chicken pox, right? I got chick I don't know anybody that didn't get chicken pox in my generation. Everybody got chicken pox. One guy I know didn't get chicken pox until he was in his 20s, and it almost killed him. Because you get chicken pox late in life, and yeah, it's a, a hard thing. But most of us got chicken pox, I mean, uh, babies getting chicken pox, right? A week later, they're fine. Now you're not worried about smallpox. Now you're not worried about a, other, a lot of other diseases because you've kicked up their immune system. Um, but no, we're going to take care of that and charge you money and give you this vaccination, which actually makes you weaker. What they've done, we have an entire generation that they're going to be able to, I mean, just like that, they're going to be able to wipe them out by giving them diseases that their immune system that is now compromised with uh, won't be able to fight. Uh, and But on the other hand, the consciousness is rising where we have now this plant that people have figured out uh, is very much the healer. What did they do to that plant? They made it illegal. What did they do? If you are growing that plant or using that plant or making medicine with that plant, um, they put you in jail. And now you can build armaments and weapons. Well, you don't usually make weapons, but armaments. You usually are, you know, you'll be making uniforms and canteens and mess kits and all this other stuff for the war machine. And then that war machine goes out. It's a beautiful plan when you get down to it. And then that war machine goes out, it's, except, for the part that we're, except for the part that we're dying, except for the part that we're killing each other for no reason. There's, how many of us are here? Take your hands. And if you get in a group of people, take your hands. Uh, here's your conscious mind. Here's your subconscious mind. Here's your unconscious mind, which is connected to the greater unconscious, right? Or you can go the other way. Here's your hands, and then you go into the middle, and uh, that great nothing that Tesla and many others talked about, where all knowledge resides, and if you make a circle, uh, it you, your, your fingers point into the middle of that circle, so that you have, I see them do it with their feet, Ubuntu. Right? There is there is the great nothing. There is that middle ground. There is that where all information springs from. Anyway, the, the point being is that you are connected to everybody else on the planet and everybody else is connected to you. Um, and yet you're an individual. You the universe in a drop, right? I mean, you are the entire universe in one drop. You're not just a drop in the universe. Uh, but the idea is that they've got you thinking that you are separate and they've got you thinking because of language, because of mind control, because of all these other things uh, that uh, you need to kill each other, right? And if you won't kill each other, they'll kill you with medicine, <laughs> right? They'll kill you with chemo. They'll kill you by making uh, uh, sulfur uh, unknown to you. Take it out of that, take multiple minerals. What? Um, oh man, really? Uh, see, I've been meditating. When you meditate, uh, what happens is uh, a lot of times those you get rewired, and then it's in there. I just I'll have to, and then once I remember it, I'll be back. I'll I'll be it'll be there permanently. Um, Linus Pauling said that all disease. See, it took a minute to to connect the right. And think about that. Millions and millions of, and I picked that one out. Um, 
Anyway, Linus Pauling told you that pretty much all disease comes from a lack of minerals, a lack of a certain nutrient, because the body craves minerals, not nutrients, or excuse me, not vitamins, minerals or nutrients. The, but the vitamins uh, are not as important as the minerals. The, mil the minerals are the building. You need copper. You want to keep your, your hair from turning? You got to have copper. Um, and see, once you can't metabolize those uh, metals, and, and the metals are not, you don't want heavy metals, uh, but you need iron, obviously, uh, for your blood. You need copper. You need all these different things in trace amounts. You, 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 need, you need, what, 98 trace minerals? And then, of course, you need the vitamins and other enzymes and so forth to be able to take those. But once you get to the point where you cannot uptake the minerals, uh, you start getting wrinkled and winzied. And uh, your skin starts wrinkling, your hair starts turning white, and that is your sign that you're aging and you're getting ready for it, right? And then when you get into that stage, you also oftentimes will become uh, acidic instead of alkaline, which is the environment that the bugs that eat you, uh, right? You're basically telling them to pre-digest you. They get ready, they come in, you die, and then they, they uh, turn you back into, uh, right? You, you go back to, from ashes to ashes, dust to dust. You come here with nothing. You you don't even get to keep the body, guys, right? So you guys that are thinking that material wealth and you really you 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 do blood sacrifice and you'll harm others to gain material wealth, are you fucking out of your minds? Yes, you're out of your minds, right? I mean, completely out of your minds. Um, that that what are the important things? Like I said, you got three things. We got three things, guys. You you got love. That you, that's it. Forgiveness, right? I mean, those are the two main. There's it's not complicated, right? Love, forgiveness, service to others. You can't serve others without serving yourself. You can't teach someone something else without teaching it to yourself, right? You can't teach, like I tell my little boys, go teach other kids math and you learn math. And I tell this to older siblings, teach your younger kids, like especially older siblings that don't have their same multiplication tables uh, uh, wired. So practice your multiplication tables with your younger siblings. So you'll teach them and they won't be in the same boat you are when you guys, you know, you can't do multiplication. You're going to have our time of fractions and so forth. And then you get to, you can't do fractions and multiplication. You're going to have a hard time doing algebra. And then you get the F in algebra and now you think you're stupid and, uh, man, and now more mind control. They got you because now you got your self-esteem and so forth. But anyway, the idea is that uh, one teaches to learn. So if you teach somebody something else, you learn it for yourself. Right? That's part of the reason why I make these videos, because if I explain it to you and then I go back and watch the video and it makes sense to me, um, that helps me uh, put all of this together. Because it's a rather complicated thing that these guys have made. They've made this system that where we don't have enough language uh, to be able to communicate effectively. We cannot communicate. Like I, the, re the day I realized that, no, honest to God, I'm a slave is the day I realized, okay, I'm a free man. Okay, I'm a free man, right? I'm a sovereign. Okay, I don't know what to do to, to even tell anybody. I don't even know where if, you know where I am when we get down to it, <laughs> right? I'm in the kingdom of Hawaii in Maui County. I'm not in the county of Maui. Uh, I'm, uh, oh, wait a minute. I'm in the Hawaiian kingdom. I'm not in the kingdom of Hawaii. I'm in the Hawaiian kingdom in Maui County. Okay, there's English. There's, there's the words to describe where I am. Uh, but if you think you're in the county of Maui and you're going to vote in the county of Maui's elections, well, then you are part of that corporation. And uh, the only person that can participate in those elections, uh, it has an all caps name and it is not the flesh. It's you fooling around on paper. Do you vote? I, do you vote out loud or do you vote by marking a piece of paper? There's a clue. <sighs> They got us. They so got us. Anyway, but the day I realized, I don't even know where I am. I don't even know what words to use to be, to let, to inform others. There's the word you want, inform, because your mother informed on you, informed them that you were dead on birth when, when she thought she was telling them that you're alive. And what was it, a birth certificate? Uh, doesn't a certificate show that is, usually shows some kind of ownership, usually? So basically, there's a corporation that owns you. They own you. They don't partially, I mean, they own you completely. They own every, they can kill you if they want to, without repercussion. You see it all the time. They can take your children. They can tax you. They can make you get permits and licenses if you acquiesce, and you do it all voluntarily, right? Uh, through this thing called adhesion. There's another word you need to know. Usufruct, there's another word you need to know. You need to understand contract law. Uh, and why don't you understand contract law? Nobody taught you contract law, 
right? Just like nobody, they barely teach you the Constitution anymore. It used to be you had to know the Constitution. They don't even teach you that anymore, right? Some kids can't even barely write their names in cursive uh, or in any other kind of language, the language for the, right, the written word. Um, it's mind-blowing uh, how effective they have been at controlling our minds to the point where we'll kill each other. My God's better than your God. My country's better than your country, right? And if they can turn each other, turn us on each other now, like right, right now, oh, believe women. So they're getting men and women to fight with each other. Uh, they'll make video games and other things and they'll, you know, the co culture and music and so forth. So the kids turn against their parents or the parents turn against their kids. Uh, and kids, kids are baby goats. Children, um, they consider us monsters, dead monsters. Uh, de and see, like I said, they make these zombie movies. They make a lot of movies that have... Uh, Disclosure in them is the new word that people like. They're starting to realize, wait a minute, they have to tell us. So you go to the movies and you'll see disclosure. Um, but anyway, they, they consider us monsters. So uh, the zombie movies, like I said, those are made for them, not for us. And uh, you notice it's always a virus that takes over everybody. There, and there's never a cure, right? There's never a redeemer. There's never a guy that comes back and fixes everything. It's usually the end of the world and there's just a few of them left, right? That's the way they look at us as the dead zombies that will take over and destroy everything and eat their brains, whereas the seat of the mind, right? I mean, it's sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Be of good cheer. Understand that there is a, uh, obviously, uh, if we're conscious, there is a consciousness in the universe. Everything is con. The, the viruses that I was talking, they're conscious. The, 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 the chicken pox and the measles, it's consciousness. Uh, it's one, con it's a huge, glorious, fabric of consciousness um, and you are a part of that consciousness you are not separate from that consciousness you are never alone and you think this is your first time here okay fine uh, right you think this is the first planet you've ever been on this is an awesome planet uh, and I live in a place where I see beauty every day of my life right I mean just sometimes sunsets and sunrises the sunrises have been so glorious lately um, water and mountains and green beautiful trees i mean people come here and they're they're just awestruck and they get sometimes the tourists get in accidents here because th they've never seen anything like it when you come from a place where it's just flat as far as the eye can see right uh, in all directions uh and here we have light and water and it's it, it's beautiful you live in a pleasure boat you live in a pleasure ship right food tastes good sex feels good right swimming naked feels good you live in a pleasure boat on planet Earth, I mean, this should be the absolute paradise. But instead, we have this small, subhuman, not human, different than humans. And what's human, according to them? Monsters. Go look it up, right? Go look up the words as they use them, right? Go look up the words as they think about them in their dictionaries of law, right? Uh, and see what the words mean, right? But we are in the uh, in paradise, basically, except that we've turned this paradise because of these people that govern us, government, they govern our minds and get us to kill each other. Uh, you kill another man, like I said, most people, when they pull that trigger, that from the second they pull, after that millisecond after they pull it, that, that trigger, they don't know what just happened. They don't know what they just did. Right? Whether it's uh, you in law enforcement, whether it's you in uh, in the military, right, fighting for your country and serving, and so, right, when you kill another person, murder, kill, however you want to do it, when you end their life before they're ready to be ended, uh, many things happen karmically. And like I said, I will not pretend to sit here and tell you that I understand how karma works, but I do understand this much. It is instant, unavoidable, and precise. And it will not be uh, denied at all, ever. You cannot avoid karma. That's why if you are just and you are doing the correct thing, and you, right, because you can be wrong, right? There's a difference, <laughs> what did I just say? You can be wrong, right? You can be wrong, uh, and then you can be incorrect. Now there's a difference. Sometimes you're not wrong, but you are incorrect, right? So, I mean, see, you gotta know what the words mean. Sometimes you can be right and be, uh, you can be absolutely right and be incorrect. Okay, and in Hawaii, we have the saying among locals that usually boggles the mind of, of people that aren't from here, uh, where we have the saying, wrong but true. 
<laughs> okay, that's being right, but being incorrect. Uh, but the idea is that you can be wrong but true. You can also be uh, you can also be right but incorrect, right? Now the idea is that they use all of this against you. You don't know what the words mean. You don't understand medicine. You don't understand law. You don't understand how your body works. So of course you you uh, and how your this thing. Uh, interacts with the world around you, but understand you're in a pleasure boat, basically. And uh, you don't get to keep the pleasure boat. You only get to be here for a little while. Uh, so you come with nothing, you leave with nothing. So I have friends, uh, we won't name names, but he don't drive the truck. I mean, he doesn't own the truck, but he gets to drive the truck. The ranch owns the truck, but he gets to drive it, right? The ranch owns the house, but he, which is a corporation. But he gets to use the house, and so do his kids, and his kids' kids, uh, and, and so did his parents, going back, you know, what, five, six generations. Because what they've done is cheat. What they've done is, there's another word you need to know. What they've done is uh, say, oh, well, you're not competent to have that land. I mean, I know you've lived here for generations and so forth, but it turns out you're, you're not competent, you savages, right? So we're going to take it from you, and uh, we're going to use the land. And we're going to take the land and uh, make whatever it is, right? We're going to do uh, cattle or dairy or sugar cane in the case of Hawaii or corn or wheat or whatever it is. And now we own the land, right? Now it's our, but they don't own the land. If you take a look at it, there's no private persons that are owning the, the, the corporations own the land and the private persons get to use the land. Okay, that, I've grown up with that my whole life. Like I said, trust babies, I've been around trust babies my whole life. Uh, and I've found, and if you talk to those, uh, tr the beneficiaries of the trust, the trustees will often fuck them, <laughs> right? And why do they fuck them? Because uh, there's so much money in the trust that the trustees can't stand it and they want the, to try to use some of that money for themselves. So they charge extra fees or sometimes they just straight up embezzle, which is, ooh, very punishable. Um, because they're stealing from the beneficiaries, widows and orphans often, because the guy that set up the trust is often the man, a husband, and he sets up a trust uh, and puts all the stuff in the trust, money and so forth, property and so on, for the benefit of his children or the benefit of his spouse. And uh, sometimes he sets it up and it's benefit for himself too. But anyway, you got to understand contract law and you got to understand the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the story of the 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 three different places that you can be in that triangle, right? Trustee, beneficiary, creator. And there's different words that people use. Um, and you have to understand the very simple words like equity. Because uh, in that other video I made, I talked about if you, uh, the license holder, or the you need a license, if, uh, <laughs> see, the idea is, see, like I said, I, I, I get beyond my pay grade very rapidly here, and I don't want you to be confused. So you have to know, you have to know it. But the bottom line is that uh, you cannot hold uh, equity and you don't get to use the thing and also have title, right? You cannot have title. Uh, he who holds, uh, wait a minute, he who holds title, uh, see, I can't remember it because I had too much meditation. I just read it a little while ago. But the idea is that he, and I don't want to edit because I'm on a different kind of machine and I don't want to, or on a different kind of device and it's too much of a hassle to go look it up. Uh, look it up for yourself or I'll put it below. But the idea is you got to know what each one of those words means. And that if you have title uh, and you're using it, then you need a license. Right? And that goes for everything. Right down to, I mean, that goes for everything. Um, so you have to, every fucking thing. Did I, did I make that part clear? So you need to understand contract law and trust law. You need to understand how to use those to your benefit. And, and you need to understand... Uh, that there are those on the planet that absolutely use this uh, to their benefit and they are the same ones that get us to kill each other by uh, controlling our minds because you don't have control of your own mind so they will control it for you. Um, you don't stand fast at the doors of your mind and guard against what you let therein so they'll put in all kinds of stupid stuff, right? They'll put in stuff like you can't be beautiful and smart if you're an American woman, right? You can't be a powerful, beautiful woman and intelligent and all of that stuff too. You can't be a super nerd, right? Nerds are always considered, uh, even men, right? If you're super smart, you're gonna have to give up strength, right? I mean, they put all this, right? 
I know plenty of men who are football players or who, you know, were engaged in athletics and also are nerds, incredibly smart and so forth. But they're going to try and teach you, to teach you or tell you that you pick one or the other, right? You can't be kinesthetic, uh, visual and, and uh, auditory at the same time, right? You got to pick one. No, you can use all three, right? You can be left brain and right brain. You can be a man of uh, knowledge that can use language and medicine and also excel in sports. Um, and you can issue that too. You can say, okay, I just want to do sports and I don't want to be, uh, right? <laughs> I don't want to be smart. I just want to be, right? And there's plenty of those guys that make crap tons of money. You can go the other way. I don't want to be in sports or, 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 or anything like that. I just want to play on, on the side of, uh, you know, intellectual pursuits. And you can get rid of the physical. But you can have all of it at once if you want, right? Uh, you can be a woman that's beautiful. I mean, like model beautiful, uh, what we consider a model, right? The American beauty myth where you have the, the right ratio of uh, breast to waist to hips to legs to, and length of the legs and length of the hair. You can have all of that. That's, that's what we consider idealistic or the ideal. And that changes over the years or over the centuries. But you can be all of that, and you can be smart, and uh, you know, have language and mathematics and medicine and law, all at once. You don't have to pick one or the other. You can have all of it. But they'll put all this shit in your mind, uh, and then they'll make you think. And then they'll make you think. Oh well, uh, then you should be jealousy. Ooh, another one of the de deadly sins, right? Oh, that guy has all of that. He has the beautiful wife. He has the. Uh, uh, money. He uh, is uh, smart and intelligent and and uh, also physical and so forth. Well, then you want to be, you know, well, then he must have cheated or he must have taken advantage or he must have, no, most of the wealthy people that I know are cool as AF, right? They're cooler than my poor friends. Although I have a lot of friends that are poor that are also very, very cool, right? Very, very uh, good people. Uh, you can watch video and they have the thing about the uh, saint that, you know, the poor saints, right? They give these guys money and do they go off and buy drugs with it? No, a lot of times you give them money and they'll go to a store and buy food and start feeding their f homeless friends, right? What kind of person is that? Why are they poor? Why are they on the street when they have that kind of heart? Uh, something is horrifyingly wrong with this system. Uh, same thing. Uh, you know, you, like I said, a, a beautiful woman who's smart and got it all. Oh man, are her friends going to be like, yay, and support her and buoy her up and throw her great parties? Or are they going to try and drag her down? Right? Crab in a bucket syndrome. What do you think? Right? Hopefully it would be the, right? But I mean, I know a lot of you know how this works. Why? Is that coming from us? Or was that put in your mind? Was that programmed into you from the time you were a child? Because that's the thing. Uh, the other day, it was great, I ran into this uh, young woman, well-mannered young woman, uh, I mean, young teen, I'm going to say probably not even 15 yet, um, but she saw me, and she knew my boys, but she didn't know me, so she came and introduced herself, shook my hand, looked me in the eye, uh, like I said, well-mannered young child, and I knew her because I knew her mother, and I knew her when she was like, you know, a baby, but I haven't seen her for quite literally probably 10 years, more than that. So she doesn't remember me at all because the things that happened to you when your mind couldn't even make beta waves, when you were still making theta and alpha waves under the age of 12 or under the age of seven, it's like, like I said, it's like being drunk. Everybody remembers but you. But I guarantee you, uh, it's in your subconscious. It's there. It's running under the surface. So uh, what, the, uh, what they figured out is they can put all that programming in there. And that's why you have to be so conscious of what you allow into your children's minds. You set them in front of the TV and there's all kind of subliminal and subconscious and so forth. Right now, they are using uh, all kinds of stuff on this screen to put in your mind that you can't, that's running underneath your consciousness, running underneath your ability to even notice. But anyway, the idea is that they put all that stuff in there. It's in there. Once it's in there, it's in there. Cannot be unseen, cannot be unheard. You may not remember, right? Just like that child did not remember me, but it's in there, right? Uh, and they can use that to your advantage or to your disadvantage later. That's why you meditate and you begin to become aware of that programming. You become aware of the limiting self-beliefs, as they say. Uh, and once you become aware of all of these uh, limitations that you've placed on yourself or that you've accepted because they placed it on yours, then you can begin 
to free up your mind, right? Uh, you start listening to music. A lot of musicians, a lot of musicians were awake or are awake and are trying to tell you, but if they tell you, they'll, they'll kill you, they'll kill them. So they tell you in music and you have to know what the words mean, right? But free your mind and the rest will follow, right? Oh, good looking chicks that are dancing and put a beat to it and stuff like that, right? Oh, they're sexy. I want to have sex with them. I don't want to listen to the words that and understand that free your mind and the rest will follow, right? Lauren Hill, they try to make hers out to be a crazy person, right? Listen to some of her music when she woke up. You can tell that she just went, <gasps> and I got to tell others, right? Everything is everything, <laughs> right? Leonardo, all these other guys told you, everything's connected to everything else, right? We are all connected. There is only one of us here. We have this idea that, right? And they've gotten us to kill each other, right? They've gotten us to murder each other. They've gotten us to accept, right? I mean, like... Uh, Ugh, war, and, and, and. Because they look different. Because they talk different. They talk funny. Me go kill them, right? I mean, it's just, it's just pathetic. And you need to understand that, yeah, there are black people on the planet, all right? There, and, uh, and when I say black people, I really mean I've seen people that have black skin. There are people that have my complexion and every shade in between. They are, there are people that are more yellow. There are people that are more red. There are more people. That, and that's the whole, that other story, right? Just start looking at the anthropology and so forth. Complete bullshit that they taught you about how, right? Boats, they don't factor in boats and so forth. But the idea that we're all, di right? Uh, what if, just a what if, what if uh, there were many uh, different races in this solar system uh, that grew up out of this one soul, this one sun that creates life, which is looks like this is the more often than not. It's not the other way around. Suns uh, make consciousness spring forth. Uh, and I don't have words. But anyway, the uh, idea is that they make consciousness. Uh, and uh, it could happen here on this planet. It could happen on a planet closer. It could, And if you're closer, you're probably going to have to have... Uh, slightly darker skin to protect you from the radiation and if you're further away you're gonna probably have lighter skin to allow the radiation to come in because when the radiation hits us uh, it ages us make no mistake it's aging but also um, but it's also healthy for us in in correct and in, in doses and uh, we only know we know that uh, you make vitamin D when we get in the Sun but guess what you make a, a whole lot of other things go on too when you get in the Sun but, uh, so if you're further away, okay, and then uh, there is this pernicious and, and nefarious and, and unkind consciousness that has been working on this planet to, uh, or not on, just on this planet, but in this solar system to get rid of the life in this, right? Because the universe is split in half, right? Like I said, this is the easiest one. Nurture children, harm children. Left-hand path, right-hand path. If you harm children, uh, we usually call that evil. If you are good to children or nurture children, we usually call that good. Okay, same goes for the whole species, actually. If you harm humans or if you, right, if you harm your fellow man or if you nurture your fellow man. If you do things that will feed him or if you do things that will take food out of his mouth. Uh, where do you want to be, right? Okay, so the idea is that uh, this consciousness, and, and then there's the other consciousness. Like I said, there's the other consciousness that is, all right, so take up the scatterlings, what's left of us, put us all on one planet. Right? And you can see, and because we grew up under that same sun, and because we grew up in the same solar system, of course we can interbreed. Of course we can, right? Uh, except for the Rh negatives, right? They, they, those ones, very interesting. Um, if the other person is not also Rh negative, the woman will not allow the body to come in, right? Uh, they, uh, we've gotten around that with medicine, but the idea is uh, not poison, medicine. Uh, to allow the woman to uh, birth and you know have a child born, right? Give give uh, give life to another, because the cusp, the place where the souls come from, who is the absolute absolute arbiter of who comes to this plane? The man with the womb, not the man. The man with the womb, the woman, right? She is absolutely no one comes here except for her. No one, none of us are here except for her acquiescence, right? And now men have tried to control that, tried to make it so that we control birth control, right? Keep them ignorant of how to even control their own body, of their own rhythms, of the plants that will, uh, the abortificants that will naturally cause the, uh, uh, 
cells to be ex excreted uh, without turning into uh, the human or turning into a baby, right? Turning into a child. But the woman is the absolute arbiter, guys. We have no, we got no say, <laughs> right? We can put the sperm in there, but we don't get to say. She gets to say. She, the vessel is the absolute, right? No one comes here except them, except for them. And once you get here, you don't own it, right? You just come, you just get to have the body and the soul gets in there. They come together, right? And here we are. Um, but if she doesn't let your body in, or if she doesn't let a body in, no soul can come and, and inhabit that body. And uh, the meaning of it all, I have no idea. But the idea that this is what happens, that you come here with nothing and you will leave with nothing, that is a truth that I don't think you can dispute. Okay, so if you, all right, absolutely fundamental truth. Okay, so on, once you get to that fundamental realization, then you start to realize, well, then none of this, none of, none of this is yours. So why do you pretend that you own it? Because <laughs> you don't. You don't own the land. You don't own, you don't own anything. But you can use it. So now, once you have that understanding, now you can start looking at your contracts. Now you can start looking at trust law. Now you can start looking, right? And now you got to look back at your contracts and look at adhesion. All these contracts that you are a part of that you're not aware of. And a lot of those contracts are not um, paper contracts. Many of them are. Many, many of them are. But a lot of them are contracts in your mind. Right? Mental contracts. Mind control. Uh, where they have made it where you think one thing, but it means another. Like I said, the Christ, the greatest story ever told, the Christ told you. You got to know your signs. You got to know what the words mean. You got to know what the signs mean. Right? Told you that directly. Why is that in there? Why is that even that's I remember that when I was young because when I was a young man uh, I came from a family where like I said the, I mean studying the Bible was was a, was a thing right you, that was the book that you read uh, it wasn't a book to be tossed that was a book that you absolutely read um, the people that were teaching it me some of them understood it it turns out as I look back some of them had no idea they had it from the baby talk uh, point of view where they you know these just stories and great stories and so forth and parables but um, no there's uh, there's more to it than that but the idea is that uh, they left the information for us in a book and uh, you need to know what the book means and you need to know what the words mean and you know you need to know what the signs and symbols mean and the guy in the in the book that the West uses uh, told you as much that you need to know, and that there is a fact, in fact, uh, you know, the ability to uh, operate or to be here in this prime material plane in abundance and happiness, right, with forgiveness and love and uh, and service to others, where everybody, we're, we're, we're in paradise. Or we can kill each other, make war, uh, you know, uh, not make love, just uh, have sex and, and uh, you know, again, one of the seven, you know, the, the, one of the seven deadly sins again is, uh, well, you know which one I'm talking about, but the idea, and, and you know men like this, and you know women like this, that, uh, that there's no love there, right? They're just, it's just carnal knowledge. It's just, you know, fucking, they're not loving, they're not caring. It's just pleasure of the flesh. Um, and they try to make it back in the 60s and so forth where people woke up and go, there's, there, really, there's nothing wrong with that to a point, but always take it too far, always go the wrong way. Probably better to be in a marriage, probably better to understand that if you're going to be doing uh, these kind of things, that the woman may be faced with uh, having a spirit that wants to come because they all want to come. We all want to be here uh, because this prime material plane is a pretty fun place to be. Uh, and then they got you, you know, on the way, oh, why are we here? Oh, I'm so depressed. Oh, it's so, right? Oh my God, really? I mean, you know, got guys committing suicide because they can't see beyond the end of their nose. And, uh, don't worry. They'll be, right? Don't, right? don't worry. Don't worry about them. There's, there's a plan for everyone. It's a, you don't understand the plan. And I, believe me, again, I'm not going to try and tell you that I understand the plan. But the idea is that, uh, it, everything is going fine, even when uh, you have loved ones that may have become depressed and uh, ended their lives. Uh, you can't. <laughs> Simple as that. The, even the words they give us, 
uh, you can't end your life. You can't kill yourself because uh, you're going to be back. You're going to, you know, it's eternal. It goes on forever. You get body after body. Um, and the Christians have a really hard time with that concept. They think we're here once uh, and that's it. And then, and then heaven or hell. Um, no, it's an eternal thing. And even then, so they believe that there is something that happens next, right? <laughs> they know that it just doesn't end, except for some of them, the Pharisees and a few others that think that, well, that's it. Your existence ends and you're over. Well, that's kind of true. Uh, this thing, for all intents and purposes, will be gone. But the thing that's in here, uh, the guy behind my eyes that doesn't realize that, oh my God, five decades have gone by, <laughs> right? And uh, this thing works pretty well, but it doesn't work like it used to. Uh, but it still works. It still does what I want it to for the most part. Uh, but I notice that I need, uh, you know, more nutrients and more sleep if I exert myself and so forth. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to uh, do all the things that I used to do when I was, say, uh, only two decades old. Um, but at the same time, it, it works pretty well for me at the moment. But uh, the idea is that uh, people want to think that they own this thing and that they own other things, uh, and you don't. And that you come here for a very brief time, you come from someplace else, you go someplace else, right? We don't even have the words. Don't you find it odd and strange that I don't have words and you don't have words to describe uh, what's going on, right? I mean, the, the, the bigger principles, like trying to describe to you uh, what happens after you die, right? We, we don't know. But, and yet we've all been dead. We've all, right? We've all had these experiences before, and yet uh, there are people that have written it down. Usually uh, we call them uh, in the monks in the East, uh, Tibetans and the Nepalese and so forth. Um, but you have a very difficult time comprehending and understanding when it comes to these quote-unquote spiritual things. And that's 100% on purpose. They gave us a language where, again, my conscious mind and my subconscious mind can't even talk to each other. When I have dreams, it speaks in one thing. That's the tarot cards. The tarot cards speak to your subconscious, right? Those are symbols and signs um, that your subconscious uses. And then we try to put words and other stuff that the conscious mind can put on it. But we, they have divorced the two so that you, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind can't talk to each other. And then they put all kinds of crazy shit in your conscious mind. Uh, to make it so that you filter the stuff that's in your uh, subconscious mind out so that uh, your subconscious mind is trying to do what you tell it to do, the genie in the bottle, um, and preserve you and make sure you're alive and make sure that, uh, live, not alive, to make sure that you stay live and that you don't die and that you pass on your genes and uh, make another one or more. But uh, you, they, they can't communicate. I mean, they are so naughty, these guys. Very, very naughty. Because they've made it so that you can't even communicate with self, much less another. Your subconscious mind cannot uh, make it clear to you. It comes to you in dreams, right? It tries to give you dreams that'll do, that'll that'll tell you the stories or tell you what you need to do or tell, right. And you know, there's all kinds of money uh, that some people make in just interpreting dreams. Uh, why is that? Uh, they want absolute control ev over every fucking thing, everything. They want control. So that they can extract wealth from you, so that they don't have to work, so that they don't, and they don't, they never do, uh, so that they don't have to do much of anything, right? And it's because, again, uh, they're not that creative, and because they were kind of lazy, and because, right? And then you get this death cult that comes along, um, and this other consciousness that comes in their left hand paths as worshiping Saturn, worshiping Satan, worshiping the, the ones that harm children, demanding blood sacrifice, and so forth. And those guys come, and because they had a, a knowledge or an understanding of uh, how things work more or less, karma and so forth, uh, they uh, took that knowledge away from the masses, kept it for themselves, and then tricked you. And you're tricked. You're tricked into thinking you are a free man. You are tricked into thinking. And even then, when you start to wake up to the fact that, wait a minute, uh, we're all equal on this planet. We don't have... E I mean, even that, you're going to argue over that. The fact that uh, it doesn't matter the color, doesn't matter the sex, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter the money. The bottom line is, uh, we're all, quote-unquote, children of God. Uh, we're all here together on this planet. 
we all have strengths and weaknesses. Uh, some people are better at playing football than I am. Some people are better at fixing cars than I am. Uh, some people are better at, uh, I don't know, whatever, right? and, and I might be better at, say, teaching math than they are, right? Uh, but all of us here, uh, serving others, loving self, loving others, uh, forgiving self, forgiving others, uh, serving self by serving others, serving others serves self, um, we do that, and uh, everyone happy, right? Everyone uh, abundant, everyone, and when I say everyone, plants and animals also, right? Not just us humans. The animals also abundant. The animals also, right? And they're poisoning the animals. They're killing off the animals because they know if they kill off the animals, they kill off us, right? They don't love us. They don't like us. And the they I'm talking about is that very small number. And it's crazy that a few thousand could control a few billion, but it's the case. And how do they control the few billion? By making sure, well, well first by taking some of those uh, others that are like us and uh, pitting them against us and telling them that they're more powerful and telling them that they have more authority than us and telling them that they can, they have the right to uh, take things from us. And do, right? Because when you talk about our government or when you talk about our ability to take care of each other, uh, you are not allowed to go into your neighbor's house, right? You are not allowed to go into your neighbor's house and take stuff without his permission. You are not allowed to go into, uh, right, uh, to harm your neighbor or to kill your neighbor uh, without any cause. If he's done nothing to you, you should do nothing to him. Now, if he or she has come and tried to harm you, you have the right to defend yourself, right? But the idea is that, no, they've tried to make it where they, we cannot delegate responsibility or authority that we don't have. Fundamental law says that I'm not allowed to kill you for no reason, period, right? So if I'm not allowed to kill you for no reason, then there's nobody here that can kill you for no reason either. I cannot give that authority to someone else. I cannot give the authority to uh, harm another because I have no authority to harm another. So understand these very fundamental principles and understand how the law is layered. There is fundamental law, right? And most of us spend no time understanding the fundamentals. And then on top of that, you can put statutes and all these other things, right? And then you can, right? And then you get divine law, right? The law of the divine, we barely understand and we get very little of it. And it's very difficult for us to discern what is actual divine law and what is actual men pretending that it's divine law. Yep, the Jesus spoke to me. Yes, uh, Buddha told me this. Uh, yeah, uh, Ganesh said that I should... Okay. Uh, and you know what? There are times I have met people that are psychic. I have met... And then absolutely psychic. Like a, a woman that... Uh, I lost my keys once and she was in another state and she told me where my keys were. Uh, how did that happen? Right? According to science and mathematics uh, of the generic type, uh, that's not possible, but I, this is an experience that I had and there's no question. And she, she, no question at all. Um, and it was two keys right back in the day when your cars needed two keys and they had come off a key ring. So one was one place and one was another. And she told me where they were. How is that possible? Uh, so there are those people that have psychic experience and then though, and then she never claimed to be, uh, able to speak with dead or to be able to, uh, have a connection to higher consciousness. She didn't say that God told her where my keys were. Uh, she, I don't know, could see them. I don't know how to explain it better than that. See, I don't have language for it. Um, but through the, uh, collective, uh, subconscious or collective unconscious, she was able to go into my consciousness and see where I had left the keys, right? So she was just looking at where I couldn't access that information my own self. She was able to. Um, but there are others, and I believe some of these others that are dis divine inspiration, that are able to talk to, or able, let's see, and that's not the right word, but able to communicate, able to uh, work with uh, consciousness that isn't embodied, that doesn't have a physical, local form, um, but yet exists and uh, operates, pervades this plane that we're in. And uh, of course we call that, uh, you know, the, the sixth sense or, you know, divine or 
uh, paranormal or extra normal. No, it's normal. It's part of the thing, right? If one can do it, any can do it. But uh, they've got us tricked into thinking that, no, only special people are psychic. We're all psychic. Only special people can do math. Anybody can do math. Math is, is intrinsic to the human. That's like saying only certain people can speak. No, we can all speak. Um, I mean, even the one that uh, most amazing, Helen Keller, right? No, I mean, but she could still obviously communicate and still had thoughts that she just didn't have the ability to uh, express those thoughts the way that we do. The same way animals have thoughts. Uh, you know, your dog gets hungry and he realizes that he has to ask you for food. You ever have a dog come up and start barking at you or crying or whining and so forth? Hey, it's dinner time. Same thing, cats, right? Just to, you know, they, they, they'll come to you and, uh, you know, make noise until you feed them. Now, if, you're, if they're not domesticated, they know that they live in abundance, right? This whole place is food. Food will be provided for them every day. All they have to do is go out and get it. Same thing with us humans. I love stories about, uh, quote unquote, indigenous people where they, because um, we're all indigenous to some place. But anyway, the idea is, again, the language and the words, but the idea is that they don't wake up in the morning afraid if they live, in, I mean, the land is fat. There is going to be, if you live by the ocean, we eat sea vegetables. How odd that we can eat all this, almost all the seaweeds, right? We can eat them. Some of them are more tasty than others. Here in Hawaii, we eat a lot of seaweed. And I have, and there's certain seaweeds that I love. I, I mean, I get, I have them in the refrigerator right now. Um, that 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 I I miss it when I don't have them. Okay, uh, sea vegetables, fish. Uh, the Chinese will tell you, right? The Manchurians. They will say if it flies in the air, if it swims in the water, if it walks on the ground or crawls in the earth, we will eat any of that, right? They eat all of it. If it grows up out of the ground, they'll eat that. But it turns out you can't eat all the stuff on land, right? Some of those things are very toxic to us and poisonous and will kill us. But we live in abundance. Now, we have gotten to the point where we delegate off, uh, you know, the farming and so forth to others and so that we can have other pursuits so that we don't have to think about, um, well, hopefully you don't have to think about where your next meal comes from. You know, I know a lot of you uh, do think about where your next meal is going to come from because they have given us this Babylonian money magic that has made it so that you no longer live in abundance and so that you're not taken care of and so that your subconscious mind and your conscious mind cannot provide for you instantly, right? You cannot manifest even enough food for yourself or a shelter and so forth. Um, and see, that's again, programming, programming, programming. Your mind, because uh, you're in a mental construct here, guys. I mean, you want to go to the next level or the next layer uh, is the fact that this is a mental construct. This is a simulation. People have figured out that this is a simulation based on mathematics. Uh, and what you do in this simulation is uh, going to be a direct, <laughs> directly affect how you place yourself in the next part of the simulation. And the simulation goes on forever, right? There are so, I mean, the layers are infinite. The people in your dreams have dreams, right? So maybe you're a dream of someone else, or is this the ultimate reality? <laughs> It gets pretty fun when you sit back and meditate for a while um, that it's infinite consciousness and the consciousness really is infinite. The universe is a little more finite than they like than a lot of us would like to believe that we think it's an infinite universe. But no, it's a, it's right. But see, then you have to think like time. If there was a beginning of time, what happened before that? Right. We live in the impossible place. If there's an end of time, well, what happens after that? If the universe is finite, then what's outside of that? Right? If this is the universe in this box, then what's outside the box? Uh, so how do you have a finite anything? It's infinite everything. Uh, it's abundant everything. Uh, you And you're connected and part of that. It's a wondrous place we're in. Wondrous, right? Uh, bewilderment is a good, is your friend. Go look, what's that quote from Rumi? Uh, Trade your cleverness for bewilderment. Right, and and the world becomes a pretty happy place because it is. It's it's an amazing place. Every day I wake up now. What's going to happen next? Uh, the show, the side show that's going on in the United States, uh, but I mean all around the world. But here in the United States, especially, they're putting on a really good show. 
I mean, we got we got all kinds of intrigue, and we got guys fighting with other guys, and we got uh, we got you know they tried to take down the president, and we got a failed coup going on, and we got and then now what is he going to do? And oh, and then it turns out that the guys that are that they're all part of the same club, and they're fighting over who they're fighting for dominion, basically, um, and they're not letting you know right, that uh, they're not for the most part. Uh, there is a from what I can understand. A contingent, uh, a breakaway civilization, a bunch of people that are horrified about what's going on here, um, want us to have the free energy, want us to have the knowledge, want us to have abundance, want us to quit killing each other, want us to stop doing what we're doing. And then there's these other guys that are hell-bent on controlling us and then governing us and so forth because they don't trust us, for one thing, to uh, govern ourselves peacefully without harming ourselves or others. So them, again, being magnanimous, if you don't take care of the trust, they'll take care of the trust. Uh, if you uh, d d haven't proven beyond a shadow of doubt to them that you can govern yourself, that you can take care of yourself, and that you won't harm others, uh, and you won't do bad things, then uh, they'll govern for you, and they'll do that, and they'll take care of you, right? They'll take care of everything for you. Of course, in return, they want a lot, <laughs> but the idea is that uh, some of these guys are not quite as evil as you want, them, want to make them out to be. They, they're altruistic, but see, it's not benign dictatorship that we have going on now. We have a ex exceptionally nefarious dictatorship going on right now, where they are killing us off uh, slow by slow. They're killing the planet slow by slow because they are evil, and they are uh, more evil than you can comprehend, really. And there's degrees of the evil, right? I mean, it's left hand, but I mean, there's the left handers that uh, they'll suck life out of babies and drink adrenochrome. And then there's the left handers that just, you know, they just uh, tax you um, and, and uh, don't have any problem with creating war and so forth so that they can make money and so on. Even, you know, the babies and dead babies and so forth just come with the scenery. Uh, and the fact that, you know, there's going to be widows and orphans and villages burned down and, and innocent animals that get blown to ribbons. Uh, yeah, that's no big deal, right? Um, they're still evil, though. And then there's the other side of the thing that wants you to uh, ascend and, and uh, have more consciousness and be more abundant and be more loving and be more, uh, more better. But the idea is that... Uh, the universe is split in half, and you have to transcend that that split. You have to des decide where you want to be and how, right, uh, and how you want to go about it. And the idea is that it's uh, it's infinite in all directions: infinite amount of good, infinite amount of evil, infinite amount of food, infinite amount of love, infinite amount of forgiveness, infinite amount of service. Uh, and how much of that infinity? <laughs> you want to partake of is entirely up to you. You have free will. You can do whatever you want to do, right? What are you going to do today? Whatever I want to do. Okay, as long as you don't hurt anybody else, you're cool. But the idea is that uh, you could make it so that you uh, progress, or you can make it where you stagnate, uh, or you can make it, I mean, you can make it whatever you want, but you are not allowed to harm or take advantage of others. Now, if others allow you to take advantage of them, or if others ask you to take advantage of them, um, well, that takes a superior man to say no, right? And this is the thing. If you don't have the ability to say no, you've got nothing, right? If all you can do is nod and say yes, and then all you can do is uh, hi, right? Ja Japanese. That doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means in their culture, right? That's not them agreeing with you all the time. It's them understanding. Uh, and it's them, uh, anyway, like I said, language, gotta know what the words mean. And it's, it's cultural, it's, uh, but the idea is that we have the ability to do pretty much whatever you want if you wake up, if you wake up to the fact. We need to stop killing each other. You need to wake up your friends you need to understand the concept that I've been going on about for way too long. Um, you need to understand these concepts and then apply them in your life and govern yourselves, govern yourselves accordingly.
right? Your own mind. Because if you don't govern your mind, there, were, there are others and they have an entire system set up to do it for you. All right? So you got to start doing it yourself. And most people, it's just easier not to have to speak more than one language. It's easier to talk in baby talk than it is to be able to speak multiple languages and understand syntax and structure and so forth and do everything right, whether you have everything to agree, especially like Latin, everything has to agree, right? Subject, verb, object, everything has to agree. Um, but the idea is that uh, that's more difficult than just speaking one language. Uh, it's easier to not know the law and just have people tell you what the law is. It's easier to just watch your TV and uh, see what's going on in politics than actually read the documents or uh, talk to the people yourself. Uh, so if you want the easy way, well, you can have the easy way, but there are prices to be paid. I was having this conversation with my youngest boy, right? Um, zero fucks given, but you got to understand that there are consequences for your actions. And sometimes, uh, it's funny as fuck, but you're going to have to take your lumps, right? You're going to have to, you're going to have to, because not everybody's going to find your practical joke as uh, funny as uh, you did and, uh, or you do. And if you, uh, do certain things, then there's going to be consequences for those things. And sometimes you know what they are and, uh, you take your lumps. Like, I remember in high school, we used to have this discipline slip system. It was hilarious. And so you could get seven discipline slips a year without getting kicked out of the school that I was in. It was a private school. So I got six discipline slips every year, <laughs> right? And I, you know, I knew what the laws were. I knew what the rules were. And, uh, yeah, maybe this time I'm going to cut a class because I want to do this instead, right? So I'm going to get a discipline slip. Or maybe I'm going to, I don't know. Anyway, I, I won't get into it. But the idea is that you take your lumps, right? There are consequences for your actions. Okay, these people have figured out that there are, and that's, uh, if you try to relate that to karma, there are uh, consequences that are fundamental uh, for your actions, right? So uh, they have figured out how to kind of sidestep or kind of make it so that they don't get the full blow of karma by making you, uh, do the work, as it were. We're making you, except the problem is you're ignorant of the fact, right? They're tricking you. So uh, you guard the prisons. They don't guard the prisons, right? You are the police officer, right? You are the one that, that uh, does the riot control, not them. Why are the people rioting? Maybe those people have a reason to riot. Maybe those people are upset about something legitimately. Um, that doesn't give them the right to break glass and, and destroy things and set stuff on fire. But at the same time, uh, maybe they have legitimate concerns. Well, on the other hand, if uh, you, uh, so, you know what I mean? So the, the idea is that it's uh, our society, there are both sides. But don't be thinking that the guys that put on the uniforms are evil. Don't be, you know, some of them are, make no mistake, some of them are. Some of them uh, they put on that uniform because they know they can get away with raping children or, or murder or, 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 or bossing people around, being bullies and so forth. But at the same time, uh, for every one of those, there's another one that is uh, like the cop that stopped me last night that's just trying to make sure that, the, you know, there's not a drunk driver on the road, uh, trying to make sure that, uh, that, that uh, you know, people don't harm each other, right? They're good guys. Um, now, I know a lot of you, like I said, have a lot of issue with these good guys because uh, you think none of them are good because, yeah, if one of their brothers does something bad, probably they're not going to tell on their brother. But uh, at the same time, th for the most part, these guys in military, in police, in, in, in uh, various organizations are there because of their good nature, not because of their bad nature. Problem is people of bad nature, people of left-hand path will always try to use these people uh, to their devices, to their ends to justify their means. Um, and they don't care, right? They don't, like, uh, they don't care if the cop gets killed in their line of duty. That doesn't bother them at all. Uh, they don't care if the cop kills you. That doesn't bother them at all. As long as you guys, right? As long as, right? As long as you two don't focus on them, <laughs> right? They're happy. But when uh, the two of you start figuring out, hey, wait a minute, we're all Americans here. Right? Or whatever that means to you, right? No mercy for the sheep, whatever that means, right? Uh, some people think that's the uh, derivation of uh, the Moroccan uh, colony or, you know, part of the empire. 
But the idea is that as long as, I mean, we're, we're, we're all humans on the planet, first of all. We're all brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters here on this planet together. Uh, but as long as we're, as long as they can get the sons and daughters, mothers and brothers, mothers and sisters, uh, brothers and fathers to fight with each other and not fight against them, they're happy. As long as you allow them to extract wealth from you without too much, uh, you know, bother and consternation and, and complaint, um, because they figured out that if they take too much, oh, then you get upset. But if they take just, no, there's a balance there, right? You've got to re re read the rules of governance, right? Um, and one of the things in governance is to make sure that you are as dumb as fucking possible, right? They set up a system of education, indoctrination, to make sure that you don't have the knowledge it would take to overthrow them, right? That you don't ask the questions, that you don't go, oh, just because I can doesn't mean I should, um, and that you never rise up against them, right? And that you are constantly divided, right? Divide and conquer. That's why every video ends with E Pluribus Unum. All right, Crime Stoppers. I went on way too long, but uh, you egged me on with that, you know, make a long video. There's your long video. Take it easy, Crime Stoppers. You blur was in them.